This is Sunday morning here, of course, in the UK, and this is when Atheism UK has its weekly sermon, its weekly attendance at a podcasting recording session. So welcome to Esther, the Afro-atheist, who's in the Midlands, and we're hoping that she's going to become a key person in the launching of a branch of Atheism UK in that zone. We hope that you're we're trying to find you some helpers to, to, to do that, wouldn't it? That, be would be, that would be that would be nice. That would it be would. great. Yes. 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 And Tom, yes. who's in the Bristol area and is similarly hoping that we will be able to get some support around the, him for that zone. <clears throat> Welcome. So, so today we're we're going to talk about this delicious dispute that's going on in the Anglican Church, the Church of Ooh. England, because they've been cogitating for about five years what they see as a problem, and that is whether to marry same-sex couples or not. <laughs> Their problem is that according to his holy scriptures, their God doesn't approve of same-sex relationships. So they, as his agents on earth, can't be seen to endorse them in their holy buildings, their churches. But there is a, a more modern wing, a progressive wing of the Anglican Church, which is recognizing the reality that same-sex relationships are normal and that it's perfectly all right for them to, if they love each other and are faithful to each other, to want to make some sort of public bond out of that experience. So this is the contentious issue that they're trying to discuss. And this week, the bishops met to finalize their proposals to be submitted to a meeting in February of the whole governing body of the church, which is the general synod. And they, in February, when the General Synod meets, they will be discussing a document called Living in Love and Faith. And it, it will cover many topics about under the rubric of love and marriage, but the, it's the same-sex relationship business that's the most contentious. And some, as I, as I said, some progressive bishops are coming round to thinking that same-sex relationship is okay and there's no reason for them, if they wish, to be prevented from marrying. And that's the evangelical members that are even, even the evangelical members are coming round to, they used to be strongly opposing this idea, but even they are coming round to thinking it might be okay to change the doctrine. So, this has been going on, and this week, the bishops' meeting pronounced, and they've decided that although same-sex marriages cannot be carried out by the Anglican clergy, they want to stick to the what they regard as the, the biblical authority there, they've decided to soften the, their attitude a bit by saying that a same-sex couple can go to a church after their civic service, after they've got married, preferably after they've been in a relationship for some years and have demonstrated their faithfulness towards each other because they approve of that. And then if they've done that, if they've met those hurdles, they can actually be given God's blessing for whatever that's worth. And they've prepared a new suite of prayers to do this. So they're not quite marriage, but they are a godly blessing. So what do you think of that? Is that an improvement? Is that progress? Where, where do I, I'll let Don, Don start because I, I, uh, I'm going to, yeah. Don, if you to, carry on, because this, this is a subject that always gets me. You want to hold forth. Gets me going. 
Okay, so Dom, come, come <clears throat> and give us your reaction to that. <clears throat> it's obviously a political fudge, isn't it? Uh, yes. But you can see why it's necessary, because um, in Victorian times, uh, the Europeans imported their religion into Africa, and, the, and, and to some extent it's uh, still held at the Victorian level in Africa. Yes. So um, there's a there's a conflict in the Anglican community, and and I can see that Welby is trying to hold the whole thing together, and it's nearly impossible. Yes. <laughs> so come on, uh, so let's have it. You're you're actually from that African ethnicity, <clears throat> aren't you? So maybe you're. Yes, I know that the I know that the church, the Anglican, the African. Uh, Anglican Church, they are completely opposed to it. Mm. And they have said to the Anglican Church as a whole, uh, if you go ahead and sign on to uh, the LGBT being able to get married, then they are going to they're going to divide. Yes. Right. So they have threatened that. Um, and it's something that's been brewing for years. Mm. Now, as an ex uh Church of England member myself, who mm. was working my way to becoming a priest in the Church of England. Yeah. When I found out, when I, I discovered that priests, uh, they they allowed to be in same sex relationships, mm. but they have to remain celibate. Yes, I had a problem with that. I had a problem because how do you monitor what this celibacy looks like? Yes. How do you uh, what do you, what are you going to do? Put a meter on the private parts of the um, of your priests to find out whether they're being celibate or not, put, right? Put a, and put a, put right? a camera in their bedroom, maybe. <laughs> but don't don't forget, John. You know these these activities don't only happen in the bedroom; they can happen yes. anywhere, including. <laughs> Up in the air in a plane. Some people are quite adventurous. They can do it up in the planes, <laughs> in wherever, you know. So but, the mind uh, mind. so but who who polices um um the other couple, the other one that is approved by the Church of England? Who approve who who polices them? Mm. Why do we get to police a a, a, a subsection of people and then everyone else is okay. Their book clearly says you're not to have sex before marriage, right? So that's mm. frowned on. But who polices the people who get married? Do they do they ask them to be celibate before they get married? If you're a man and a woman, right? If that's okay to allow that, then why do we have these special requirements of the priests? Mm. They, they, the, the one thing uh, Church of England prides itself on is that they are progressive. Unfortunately, I beg to differ. I don't see progress. How can you, you're, you're nearly there. Just go all the way, right? If you're going to allow them to be in same-sex relationships, right? Just go ahead. Just allow them to be married for goodness sake. Don't, you don't get to police people's private parts. And if you have Okay, so it, going by the, the, the contents of your book, God created these people. Their book says, I, before I knew you, be, no, before I formed you, I had known you. That's God speaking. So God is saying that before he had formed them in their mother's womb, he had already known them. He had known they were going to be LGBT. He, was, he knew they were going to be gay. He knew they were going to be lesbian. He still created them anyway. He still created them with these body parts, right? And yet gets to dictate what they do with said private parts. I don't understand this. If God truly wanted people to have these uh, 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 same, not, not same sex, but, you know, hetero um, uh, normative sex, right? Then he wouldn't create people with these desires. He wouldn't create people with these emotions, right? He would make it so straightforward that there wouldn't be any um, anyone trying to go against God's rules. It's really pathetic that your God would create people with these desires, with these uh, uh, private parts, and gets to police them, and mm. then threat threatens people with hell. 
for something he a problem he started to begin with. Yes. And yes. this takes this takes me back. Sorry, John. I know I'm I'm going a, a bit. <laughs> Don't this worry. Takes, okay. It takes it takes me back to the story of creation. The same God of this book cleverly plants a tree in that garden, and these two, Adam and Eve, had no knowledge of good and evil, had no clue what they were doing. And when how convenient the moment the serpent comes along. God walks away. He's nowhere in sight, right? And they eat mm. of the they eat of this tree. Guess what he does? He punishes them. Not <laughs> only punishes them, he punishes everyone that comes after these two, right? Yes. So I don't understand this. How is God the instigator and still the same one who gets to punish people as well? How do you create <clears> people <throat> who are LGBT and then you get to police them? You get to punish. I don't understand it. I'm okay. hoping that Don and John, you all will be able to answer my questions. What you you realize <laughs> why I could not hand on heart carry on being a member of the Church of England. It's hypocrisy. Absolutely. Of yes, course, hypocrisy. of course, this line of reasoning, which which takes the the religious uh, givens as a starting point, uh, can very easily demonstrate that we reach an absurd position, which is one of the reasons why we should reject the whole thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes. It is crazy because presumably as a omnipotent creator, he could have made us into asexual beings. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of organisms who don't have male and female and they just split <laughs> in two and produce offspring like that. Well, yeah. leaving, leaving sex to one side, there's the whole concept of sin. And yes. uh, presumably if he was that clever, he could have created us without uh, any tendency to sin. But yes. um, uh, the, the whole thing just doesn't hang together, which is what we've discovered long ago. Yes, indeed. Yes. Well, I'm I'm so pleased that um, this is finally bubbling up to the surface in our culture. And they're still conflicted in how to respond to reality. For example... Can I, can I, can I, share, can I share with you very quickly, John? Yeah. Did you hear about Desmond Tutu's daughter? Yes, I did. Yes, that's sad, isn't it? You know, she yes. was she was prevented from mm. being able to conduct a uh, a funeral because she's because she is married to an Ang well, she's an Anglican priest. Yes, but because she's married to a woman. Yes, mm. they had to move this funeral to a marquee, a yes. ninety-year-old man. Who had clearly set his funeral um, and you know everything all planned, but because yes. the Church of England would not let her marry, uh, sorry, because she's married to a female, yes. so now his his funeral had to be moved into a market. That's disrespectful. Yes, it That's is. That's highly disrespectful. Mm. Absolutely. So I, I love the way they argue amongst themselves, as you know. And in Australia, the Anglican Church there has just taken their argument to the extreme of splitting into two halves. So there's now the progressive Australian Anglican Church who will perform same-sex marriages and the traditional Australian Anglican Church who won't. So it's happening. These, these disagreements are... <coughs> making the whole edifice fall apart. And although the bishops in this country have just come up with this fudge, this trying to face both ways policy by approving of faithful same-sex partnerships, but denying them godly endorsement in the form of the act of marriage, Justin Welby, the leader of the Anglican what do they call it, communion, the whole mm -hmm, lot, mm -hmm, worldwide mm -hmm. lot. He has just announced that, he did this yesterday, he personally will not be using the new prayers to bless gay couples. So even the leader can't endorse the policy that the bishops have collectively arrived at. So it's one what, question in my mind is that if this uh, schism uh, happens in uh, in the UK, 
Now, which of the two resulting churches will be, be able to claim the privilege of being established? Yes, indeed. And if it happens before May, who's going to crown the king? <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the, the other thing, uh, when we think about, yes, 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 gone. Um, this country was a predominantly Christian nation. Right. So they could make laws, they could, uh, the, the church had a very huge impact. But unfortunately, that's changing now. Um, this country can no longer be regarded as a Christian nation. Because there's more, there's more people who don't subscribe to any form of religion. Yes. Um, and so I guess the church has a duty to, um, you know, they, they need to start to realize that they're losing yeah. their grip. They're yeah. losing whatever power, whatever authority yeah. they have. And yeah. they better start moving with the times. They're struggling to get people through the doors. Yes. They're struggling to get the numbers in. You see most of the um, Church of England, they're, they're up for sale, right? Yeah. That's they, right. they, 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 all uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful buildings mm, with the nice, uh, uh, nice stained glass windows, you know, but yet I've, empty I've fancied, on a Sunday. I fancied buying one because I'd love the address, you know, John Richards, Chapel of the Virgin Mary. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yes, guys. If, if they're not, if they're not moving with the times, unfortunately, their yeah. decline is going to continue. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So what we're looking at here is they're still fighting a rearguard action. They haven't really accepted that they're an anachronism. The world has moved on. They've got to come to terms with that. Guys, you've been truly wonderful. I've loved having a chat with you as usual. So I'm going to wrap this up because the shorter these things are, the more people attend to them. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.